I saw it. Is it better? Okay. Um, so hi again. Um, my name is Sam. And uh, this talk is going to be about uh, an email client which uh, I started a couple of years ago. Um, now, you might ask, uh, why do we actually bother with uh, setting up email clients um, and you know, starting new ones from scratch? Sorry, new email clients from scratch. Um, the thing is, uh, I think that uh, Troita is a particularly fast one. And uh, when I say fast, I really mean it. I mean, um, we have it written on our website and whenever a new user comes and you know, price starts at Troita for the first time, they were really surprised that it actually happens to be fast. Which is why I uh, would like to show you a quick demo, which I hope is going to work better. Um, so what I'm going to do in this demo is, uh, you know, just a very simple benchmark. How much time does it take to open a mailbox which contains something like half a million of email messages? And uh, I can tell you a secret. It's going to take 15 seconds, which seems like an eternity when you're sitting here, standing here. So I'm going to click the mailbox right now, and you can, what you can see on the right is that there is actually some progress going on. The email messages are starting to, to, to load, and it's still very slow because you know all of the caches are actually cold. There is no persistent caching. I disabled it on purpose for, for this demonstration. And uh, yeah, it's also using a debug build of Qt5, you know, a build of demo client, but it still is pretty fast. So it was a very quick demo. What I can do, um, I can change and now the mailbox. You know, it comes up which one I guess when I go back to the to the original half a million email messages thing, it's going to pop up very quickly. Yeah, something like two seconds. So uh, now you might ask why, you know, why exactly is it so fast? Um, so the biggest reason is uh, lazy loading, uh, which means that uh, Troita doesn't actually you know load anything which is not needed. It's in the you can see that. New messages start to start to appear, uh, and everything essentially happens on the fly. That simple flashing, which you can see, is that uh, you know these are some placeholder messages. Um, another reason, another reason for being so fast is uh, it will be delegated, doing as much as possible to the IMAP server. Which means, for example, mm. <coughs> sorry, if uh, if we are searching through the emails. Uh, the search is not actually going to, to happen on your device, but it's all done to, on the server side, and what you get back is just the result. And uh, of course, everything is cached, which means uh, whatever, whenever something was already downloaded, it really won't you know, keep downloading it over and over again. Um, if, you open, if you open an email which contains a huge attachment, for example, you know, a picture of, a, of your friend's kids or whatever, um, the first thing which Twitter does is to is asking the server for the structure of the email, and uh, you get back you know quite a compact data structure, and you see just the just the textual content of the email, and uh, yeah, the attachments are loaded uh, only when needed. Um, there is of course a catch with this, uh, and the catch are called crappy IMAP servers. Um, there are actually two sorts of crappy <laughs> IMAP servers. Um, the first of them are more or less harmless because you know if uh, an operation is just slower or takes a little more time or or uh, you know transfers a lot more data, it doesn't really matter. Um, what is a little bit more annoying are uh, um, IMAP servers which uh, which lack some features. For example, um, and you know this is quite an often often requested feature. Um, there is Gmail, which uh, unfortunately doesn't really support um, you know email threading or conversations, showing messages and threads. Um, <clears throat> the thing is, Gmail actually does support something very similar, but the catch is they are doing this in non-standard manner. And I mean, it would be really terrific to have you know, a new feature within Trojita which would which, uh, add support for this thing, but so far nobody's contributed it yet. But you know, we are open for accepting patches. And, yeah. um, I can show you a couple of, or I can tell you a couple of numbers or statistics. We started in 2006. Uh, we joined KDE in 2012. 
which is actually you know, the time where it actually became usable for day-to-day -day work. And uh, I mean, joining the KDE was quite really nice experience, um, especially the Summer of Code and Google Code in uh, competitions or well, collaboration. Karan Lutra, who is sitting right there, right? He, uh, he's one of our Summer of Code students, and uh, you know, working with all of the new guys was something which I really liked. And uh, so far, more than 70 people has contributed to Trojita, which is quite a nice thing. Um, I'm not including translators because you know translations are uh, really a separate uh, repository. And uh, yeah, if we are speaking about the size of the project, um, these numbers are really, really, you know, something like estimates. And I think that on the complexity scale, we are roughly comparable to either Ocular or Ocular uh, conversation. Something in between, you know, it really depends on what sort of uh, metric you, you, you want to look at. Um, about the roadmap, uh, as you maybe have seen when, when I showed the uh, user interface, it's sort of simple. And uh, no, that's not a bug, that's a feature. But the thing is, right now we only support a single email, single email account, which uh, is sort of you know useless limitation. And uh, so the work which uh, which is needed to, to get rid of this limitation, it's something which is uh, something like a high priority item for us. And uh, you know, but still, lack of time. Or um, I think that all of the technical layers are in place, and you know, this is just more or less a matter of fixing a couple of UI, UI classes. But you know, it's still still not done. Um, another thing which we plan to do in the future is uh, integrating the, the work which another summer of code student, Stefan Plotz, has done. It's about uh, finally supporting open PGP encryption and something else. Um, yeah, and there is the final thing. Uh, maybe some of you are, might be familiar with, uh, with the Ubuntu phone thing. So they, are using, they, are, they have an email client which is called Deco, which is based on Trita. Um, they, uh, yeah, they essentially fork the code base, and uh, I think it would be terrific if we can somehow merge it back so, you know, to, stay, to stay a single project. But uh, I'm not sure whether this is going to ever happen. And yeah, I think this is all that I have. Yeah. Sorry once again for the huge delay with uh, extra intervention. <laughs> if we have some time for questions, maybe. And regarding the support for encryption and signatures and stuff like that, did you end up writing your own stuff again, or did you yeah. use Cleopatra and it's using uh, what what we ended up doing is using QCA, and QCA unfortunately uses uh, the command line interface for 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 GPG. I think. Why not KDE code? Well, you know, if there is a choice between uh, a PLQ library which is distributed with KDE, which QCA is, which you know looked like an obvious first choice. Sorry? Okay, well, yeah, I think it would be possible as well, but, yeah, I think, you know, any, any library is going to work. I mean, maybe I wasn't clear enough. We are using the QCA library, and the QCA library already handles everything which we need. So, uh, yeah, it's essentially just a cute wrapper around something. Yeah, I think that's great. I mean, uh, 
you know, uh, I have quite a lot of stuff to, to take care of in you know, professional life and personal life, but uh, I think this makes a lot of, lot of sense to, I mean, this is quite specifically an on topic thing for Takita, and uh, yeah, I think it makes a lot of, a lot of sense. And uh, in fact, I think that uh, you know, the stuff which uh, was done for the Hermaton port back when you know, Nokia was still in the game, and also what, uh, what was done by both uh, us and the Ubuntu guys for, for Vico, it's actually you know, brought us quite a long way towards you know, just making a QML user interface for, for something. Yeah. So I think it would be terrific, yeah. I'd be very, very happy to help.